I want you to create a time machine in your mind that takes us back to the beginning of evolution. Take us back in time to 5,000 years ago, where the world was one, where divisions did not exist. One that was faced with no development, with no infrastructure, communication, or any of the facilities that we rely on today to make our lives significantly easier. Now, take your time machine slowly back into the modern world. I encourage you to take a look outside, witness the numerous revolutions that brought the changes and infrastructures we see today. If those we saw on our journey back to the modern world saw the lives we lived, they would believe that we have it all figured out. But a number of main questions still remain. How were we able to progress so far to where we are today? How much more can we push innovation? And what purpose did these creators have in mind as they developed objects that the populations of today couldn't imagine the world without? I want to talk to you about a story I came across earlier while I was glancing at the news. With the consideration of the immense growth and proliferation of COVID-19 in both Canada and the United States, it was projected that many citizens wouldn't be able to survive or escape the pandemic untouched, which has been attributed to our historically comfortable way of living always relying on the goods and services that come second nature to us, with any lapse in them, making us feel uncomfortable and incapable of pursuing and accessing our ways of living. I urge you all to take a moment to think about the individuals who still inhabit lives which we would only shudder to hear of, with the ability to be treated for curable illnesses is out of their hands, and their abilities to stay healthy diminishes with their lack of access to water. Yet, those individuals are still able to push through. I want to posit a theory called logotherapy by a man named Viktor Frankl in the 1940s. Essentially, the theory proposes that human beings are, by nature, motivated by a search for meaning. As an Austrian psychologist and a survivor of the Holocaust, he experienced and lived through to numerous concentration camps. As you can picture, the living conditions in those camps were inhumane, where they were stripped of every shred of human dignity. With little food, rampant illness, and working long hours in the freezing cold, Frankel was forced to wake up every morning and accept his treatment as an animal. But it's crucial to remember that, in those circumstances, you're not only a prisoner physically, but a prisoner of your own mind. Where the search for meaning becomes meaningless, and you no longer hold on to hope. For Frankel, as his family was taken away from him one by one, he continued his vast search and record-keeping of the psychology of those he interacted with, and local therapy was created. On a more technical scope, Frankel pinpointed three main processes that allowed humans to identify their purposes in life. Number one, experiencing reality by interacting authentically with the environment and with others. Number two, changing our attitudes when faced with the situation. And number three, giving back to the world through creativity and self-expression. While being authentic and ensuring that you remain malleable in your attitudes is key, what inspired me and what I want you to keep in mind is number three, giving back to the world through creativity and self-expression. A little over two years ago, I met a woman who drastically changed my perception of life. Andrew Molula lives in Lusaka, Zambia, and is the founder of a nonprofit organization called Twin Day Education Center, situated in Lusaka's only cancer hospital. She has chosen to dedicate her life to providing education to the hundreds of children who visit her center or receiving treatment for various types of cancer. After visiting her in December, a question always burned at the back of my head, and it wasn't until one afternoon when I couldn't wander any longer. I asked her, what is your purpose? Why do you do what you do? Though I was worried she would laugh at such a broad question coming from a 15 year old girl, she looked at me kindly and said, well, when I see the smiles on the children's faces, when I realize that what I've done has contributed to their success, it pushes me to do more for them. I milled on her words for a while as she recounted the story of one of the boys that she helped in the past whose name is Kondani. Kondani has been with Andrea since almost the foundation of her nonprofit organization. Diagnosed with leukemia at a young age, the odds of Kondani's survival were low. However, 
Even though he was told over and over again that he didn't have much time left, he chose to persist through his illness and has thrived in school despite this setback. He now dreams of becoming a doctor that specializes in leukemia who will travel to rural villages of Zambia to provide medicinal support. She explained to me that seeing these stories of Kondani and numerous others gave her the reason to continue. When I arrived at 20 2017, I met all of the kids at the Learning Center, immediately understanding the passion that Andrea felt when she first founded the center. Every single child there has dreams and goals they want to pursue, no matter the health complications they face every day. While the younger ones had slightly loftier and outlandish goals of becoming the president of Zambia, the older ones wanted to become people who could contribute back to their society. My time at Twin Day changed my outlook on life and opened a new chapter for me, one where I found my purpose, to give back to my society by any means possible. That's when others and you came into fruition, where I aimed to raise awareness about the lack of education in developing countries by selling t-shirts. My goal was to weaponize fashion as a means to remind people that there exist so many talented individuals who currently lack a voice and a platform. As members of a society with privilege, we must remind ourselves to use our voices to stand up for those who are systematically oppressed and denied the same educational resources those of us with access of levels of education are entitled to. My journey of fighting for the leveling standards of education are far from over. There are still multiple things I must fight for in order to achieve my goals. But this is what I have chosen my purpose to be. The word purpose has a multitude of definitions. Like Viktor Frankl mentioned, it is not a word you can define so easily. Everyone has different interpretations of this word, and it is up to us to define what our purposes are. To some, it's about authenticity. To others, our own attitudes. But never forget that giving something back to the world through creativity and self-expression can be one of the most rewarding experiences and paths to finding your own purpose. Our every day is a fight for finding meaning in our lives. And I hope that one day you will use your abilities to help those who are in need of it the most. Thank you.